Sanjeev for your uh, second talk on this thing. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you uh, uh, for uh, IMA for uh, having given me this opportunity to do this uh, webinar series. I thank uh, Dr. Ramakrishnan, the president of IMA uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, uh, for uh, having a great occasion despite his uh, uh, work schedule. Uh, uh, thank Dr. Maragada Mani, uh, who is a North Zone Vice President, and uh, uh, thank Dr. C. V. Nadrajan, our own President, and uh, my special thanks goes to Professor V. Mohan, uh, who has made history in the field of diabetes from India. If uh, someone uh, asks about diabetes in India, uh, any international authority should know his name, uh, and he uh, followed his footsteps of his illustrious father. Uh, who was the uh, uh, first to start a diabetes clinic in the Government General Hospital, Chennai. Uh, and thanks uh, for the colleagues who have uh, given their time to attend this uh, webinar. Uh, the challenge for me today is uh, to cover everything because when it comes to history, uh, you can't just leave people behind. So we need to acknowledge everyone. So uh, I think I have uh, done a reasonable job in this and maybe uh, once I finish, uh, I would like to uh, hear your comments. This is the second presentation in the series, Papyrus to Pump, the Biography of Diabetes. In the last presentation, we traveled uh, back in time. One moment. Yeah. Uh, we covered the biography from Eber's Papyrus uh, then discussed how the findings of Celsus and Gallen throttled the growth of scientific knowledge for over 1,200 years. We also saw how Paracelsus boldly threw the works of these two uh, great men into fire and encouraged young scientists to think on their own and uh, start doing scientific experiments and experiment for themselves. So as far as uh, the history of diabetes is concerned, we lost almost 3,000 years in just getting it to the right. <laughs> Pancreas has always been an organ of conundrum or an unresolvable puzzle. This may be because of its hidden retroperitoneal location, because it was ignored from antiquity. And the first mention about pancreas comes from Herophilus, <laughs> who was 300 years before Christ. Then Rufus of Ephesus, uh, 180, made it pancreas. Probably it came from the Greek word pan, uh, which means all, and pancreas, flesh or food. English translation of fabric of the human body uh, by Andreas Vesalius, volume 5, mentions the term sweet bread. So they called pancreas a sweet bread from uh, this period on. 1996, it was considered a salivary gland. So nobody was sure why it is there in the body. Then, starting from uh, Brunner, uh, who was the first to resect the pancreas, to Claude Bernard, who shifted the focus uh, to the liver, and to Minkowski, who stumbled upon the pancreas as a seat of diabetes, it took almost another 206 years to zero in on the right target. We'll start with uh, uh, some of the illustrious names. Uh, first is uh, uh, Regnier de Graaf. Uh, he was a Dutch physician and anatomist. His doctoral thesis was on pancreas as early as 1664, which was 256 years before Banting's experiment. This picture depicts the complex surgical procedure which he performed on dogs. Even though he did his PhD in pancreas, he turned his attention to embryology later on. He was the first to describe the graphene follicles of the ovary. All of us will be knowing graphene follicles. So it is from his name, uh, Regnier de Graaf. Uh, his original drawings uh, of the graphene follicle, you can see the graphene follicle uh, drawn by uh, de Graaf here, and uh, uh, the ectopic pregnancy drawing done by him. Uh, his this is de Graaf's PhD thesis, which was uh, submitted in uh, 1664. And on the right, you can see the English translation, which appeared uh, uh, two years later. We have to acknowledge the fact that one institution was intimately associated with the research on pancreas. 
University of Strasbourg. University of Strasbourg in France was founded in 1538. After the franco prussian <laughs> War, Strasbourg was occupied by Germany. Germans added many buildings. A lot of German researchers took up faculty positions in this university. So uh, it has the distinction of producing 19 Nobel laureates, which includes Paul Ehrlich and Rongen. The other notable names from this university are Thatcher and Adolf Kussmann. We all know who they And this is the University of Strasbourg building uh, in the modern times. Then we'll go to uh, Johann uh, Conrad Brunner. Uh, he was the first to resect a uh, pancreas. He was born in Dusenhofen, a small Swiss rural town. He studied medicine in Strasbourg, the same university which I mentioned just before, from 1669 to 1675. So while he was a student, he took uh, a break and traveled to Paris, London, Oxford, and Amsterdam. So he was a traveling student then. So, Hello, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Shall I stop, ma'am? Yeah. 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 I, I request. Uh, uh, sorry to stop uh, the uh, talk. I just want our president because he is busy with his uh, work uh, there today's meeting. I request of our president to uh, say a few words. President, sir. Is he there? Is our president there? Mm -hmm. Say, so, Dr. Maragadamani. Madam? Yes. Can you say a few words, madam? Sorry, I, uh, I didn't ask the president to speak. I think he has left already. He has a meeting today. Mm -hmm. It is on the, for, for the president and secretaries at uh, Idila for the north, uh, south zone and uh, east zone. I think he's busy with that. I, he came just now. I forgot to call him and uh, I thought he will stay for some time, but he's not there. Can you please say a few words, madam? Sorry, before we start the program again. So a mistake I... Unmute yourself, madam. Okay. It's not allowing participants to unmute themselves. Well, yeah, madam, you can unmute yourself, madam. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, madam. Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Nala Permal, for this uh, second uh, talk on uh, diabetes. Um, actually, today we had a meeting this morning along with uh, the, all the other branch uh, uh, members, president secretaries uh, in the morning between 10 and 1 o'clock. And this afternoon, they are having the similar meeting with uh, the south and the east zone branches. So I think uh, Dr. Uh, Ramakrishnan must have left for that meeting. Um, I feel honored to be the chief guest for today's program. And uh, Dr. Shanta, our uh, energetic uh, secretary, has been uh, organizing all sorts of uh, meetings to commemorate the various uh, uh, important days uh, that we celebrate in IMA. And uh, diabetes being the hot topic for the uh, all of us, uh, we are very eager to listen to your talk, Dr. Nala Perma. Last uh, talk I missed, I couldn't attend. So I'm looking forward to listen to you. And uh, thanks for uh, organizing this program. And uh, Dr. Uh, Shanta and Dr. Yashoda. I think you can proceed with the talk, sir. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Um, so, uh, Dr. Uh, Brunner, uh, actually, he was a student and. Yes, sir. Uh, proceed, before, sir. Uh, before finishing his uh, graduation, he uh, took a break from his studies and traveled to. Paris, London, Oxford, and Amsterdam. 
During his discussions there, no one had an answer about the functions of the pancreas. This stimulated him to do more research. While on his travel, he was uh, actually doing pancreatectomy and he did that trigation, everything when he was traveling. He published his book, Experimenta Nova Circa Pancreas in 1683. You can see the uh, book cover here. Uh, his description of the pancreatomized dogs was remarkable. I'll just uh, read verbatim. Quote, all the pancreatized dogs were thirsty in the post-operative period. Dog file has been, had been observed urinating, uh, urinating uh, large quantities, wetting a vast area of the ground. Survived six months and was demonstrated on the latest visit to the laboratory. Brenner stated that dog was drank in temperature from a small brook. Okay. He was equally thirsty, greedily drinking milk. So he was describing polyuria in the dogs. Ma'am, can you unmute? Can you mute? Uh, he was so close, but failed to realize that he had produced diabetes in the dog by removing their pancreas. The world had to wait for another 200 plus years to make this association. In the meantime, uh, in 1780, Thomas Colley published a case history wherein he recorded the first observation that the pancreas was damaged in a diabetic patient. Even though he identified few calculi in the pancreatic duct, he dismissed it as an incidental finding. Probably this was the first record of some kind of relationship between pancreas and human diabetes. That's where uh, this uh, record is important. Even before his work on pancreas, we all know Paul Langerhans, even before his work on pancreas, Langerhans wrote a paper on the dendritic cells of the epidermis. Now we call these cells as Langerhans cells. You can see the picture of the cell drawn by him uh, as seen under a light microscope. He was a third year medical student when he published this landmark paper. On the right panel, you can see a modern immunofluorescent image. Even 150 years of technological advancement could not add much more detail uh, to his original picture. You can see both the pictures, what he drew, uh, what he saw under a light microscope versus a modern uh, immunofluorescent image. So it was almost similar. He was so brilliant. <laughs> he was the only student who was exempted from the final year oral examination. Paul Langerhans was still a medical student In this thesis, he refers to the islands of clear cells throughout the gland, staining differently into the surrounding than the surrounding tissue. Uh, he also noticed that these islands were more richly innervated, but he could not suggest a function for these islands. Oops. One moment, ma'am, I'm just having difficulty. One moment. Yeah, sorry about that. And this was his thesis, and this is a nice biography of him authored by uh, John I am Hassan. So I always used to wonder what happened to Langerhans afterwards. Such a brilliant student. Uh, when he was a medical student, it was mentioned that he presented a thesis on islands of cells. So what happened to him? So why he was not in the big picture of developments in pancreas research? Unfortunately, he developed extensive pulmonary tuberculosis after his life uh, graduation. He went to many countries for treatment. After getting a little better, he settled in the Portuguese island of Madeira and turned his attention to biology. He did extensive zoological studies of uh, the fauna of the Canary Islands and Madeira, 
he made remarkable contributions to the literature on invertebrates he also wrote two papers on tuberculosis which changed his destiny at the very young age of 41 he died due to kidney infection and failure next is apollinaire uh, buchardot he was a french professor of hygiene he identified a pancreatic lesion in the postmortems of diabetic patients he speculated that the principal cause of diabetes was located in the pancreas he advocated a large decrease in starchy foods and sugars and avoided uh, and advocated exercise therapy for diabetes so he was the first to, to talk about uh, diet and exercise properly to the patients he encouraged even self monitoring of urine glucose with chemical agents by patient themselves as his teachings largely resemble what we follow today that is education and self empowerment of uh, our patients he is considered as the father of modern diabetology that's why he was featured in the cover of this diabetology magazine and uh, this is the famous book uh, 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 his book on uh, treatment of various ailments no way formulary magistral a primary source edition next comes uh, etn lancerox lancerox was a French physician who later became the national president of the French Medical Association. His best known student was Nicolas Paulescu, whom we will cover later, uh, who came very close to discovering insulin. Uh, we shall see about him later in this presentation. In 1877, uh, Lance Rox published a paper in which he used the term pancreatic diabetes. He also made clear distinctions between lean and fat diabetes. Uh, Bernard Nounin was the head of uh, medical clinic at the University of Strasbourg. We uh, just a uh, uh, few slides back we uh, covered about the University of Strasbourg. So uh, he was a uh, mentor uh, to many illustrious students, among which few of them became Nobel laureates. He moved from uh, Germany to Strasbourg when Germany occupied this French territory. Uh, he is remembered for his work on metabolic pathology. He was father of two medical classics one on uh, cholelithiasis you can see on the left side uh, it was published in 1896 and uh, the on diabetes uh, he was an authority on diabetes and he uh, also founded this journal uh, nounin archives of archives of pharmacology he proposed a very strict low carb diet for diabetic patients we shall learn a little bit about two of his illustrious students and how luck brought them together to perform an unplanned experiment which provided a momentous discovery so the first student uh, and a current uh, professor at that time was joseph von mary he discovered barbitol we all know barbiturates barbitol which was marketed as uh, veronal tablets very popular around that time uh, he is also credited with uh, describing the blood glucose lowering effect of florizin a glycoside isolated from apple tree bark bark it took almost 130 years uh, for us to reach uh, uh, to get a medicine out of this now we know we have sglt2 inhibitors so uh, uh, he was a senior uh, professor around that time the second student uh, of nounin and was also a faculty at the time was the younger of the two oscar minkowski his father was an eastern european grain trader who moved his family to konisberg to escape the anti-semitic uh, policy of uh, the tsar uh, tsar regime the regime of uh, russia the tsars were very powerful in russia and they were uh, not uh, very kind enough to the jews living in russia so this family escaped from russia into konisberg his brother uh, who is depicted here uh herman minkowski became a world famous mathematician and he was a mentor to albert einstein in zurich minkowski's mentor was bernard nounin bernard nounin was teaching at his medical school in konisberg when nounin moved from konisberg to strasbourg minkowski also followed his mentor till these two uh, students that is uh, minkowski and uh, Von Mering met uh, in a library. Uh, they met in the library by chance. So, what? the year eighteen eighty nine, when the world came to know about 
what sweet bread is meant for. So uh, at that time, uh, sweet bread is a culinary name for thymus, which is neck sweet bread, and the pancreas belly sweet bread. So they were actually eating uh, the pancreas of animals as a delicacy. While the thymus is sweet in taste, bread may have come from the roasted meat. That's how it is called sweet bread. So it was the year 1889 when the world came to know of the function of the pancreas, which was used well, only as a culinary item till then. For that, these two had to meet uh, in the library of uh, University of Strasbourg. In 1889, uh, they started discussing about Mering studies on free fatty acids. Von Mering lamented that he was not able to prevent the pancreatic juice from getting into the intestine even after ligating the pancreatic duct. Minkowski simply said, then remove the pancreas. Why you want to ligate the duct? Just remove the pancreas so that the, the secretions will go away. Mering said this would be very difficult. Minkowski immediately offered to do it for him. As the dog was available, the same day, both men performed a total pancreatectomy in a dog. As Mering had to leave the city in the same evening to attend to a sick relative, he left his dog in Minkowski's lab. As this was a housebroken trained dog, they left the dog unrestrained in the lab, closed the lab and went back home. The next day when Minkowski came back for work, he noticed that the dog had urinated in two, three places in the lab floor. He called the lab attendant to ask him why he did not uh, take it outside on time. The attendant replied that he did take it out many times, but said, uh, even after emptying the bladder, it voided large volumes of urine on the floor. An idea suddenly struck Minkowski and he immediately took a pipette and drew a few ml of urine from the floor and tested it for the presence of sugar. The test was strongly positive. Minkowski did total pancreatectomy for three more dogs. The first two died, but the third survived and had persistent diabetes. Even though Brunner noticed polyuria in similar circumstances almost a century back, he failed to test or taste the urine for sugar. Minkowski presented his results at the first International Congress of Physiology in Basel in uh, 1889. This was a highlight of that conference and was a milestone in the field of diabetes. This is a plaque in the University of uh, Strasbourg celebrating their discovery. Uh, he was nominated for Nobel Prize six times. Minkowski and his uh, students tried to get the pancreatic extract but couldn't succeed. He was among the team of top physicians called to Moscow to attend to Vladimir Lenin when he developed a stroke. So Minkowski died in 1931. Interestingly, 10 years later in 1941, a generous economic support was made by Best, Charles Best from the University of uh, uh, Toronto to take Mary Siegel. Mary Siegel uh, was a widow of Minkowski. Uh, she was living in Berlin. So since the Minkowski family is a Jewish family, uh, uh, there was a threat for their life. And Charles Best made a lot of efforts to get uh, the widow of Minkowski uh, to escape Hitler's Nazis. This was the only time insulin research fund held by the University of Toronto was used for a non-research purpose. Very interesting indeed. The name Charles Edward Brown Secord is associated with Brown Secord syndrome. We all know Brown Secord syndrome, hemisection of the spinal cord produces uh, ipsilateral muscle weakness and contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation. His father was a merchant sea captain who died even before he was born. His mother brought him up and out of love for his mother, he added his, her name Secord to his name. So Secord was originally her, uh, his mother's name. He succeeded Claude Bernard at the College of uh, um, College de France, uh, which was a university in France. Later, he became professor at the Harvard, in Harvard University also. So he, he worked in US as well as in Europe, as in topmost universities. At the age of 76, he delivered a lecture at the Société de Biology in Paris in the same year, 19, sorry, 1889, soon after Minkowski's discovery, the same year he was uh, giving a lecture in, uh, in a conference. In his lecture, he claimed that he had injected testicular serum of rabbits for 14 days daily and he felt rejuvenated. 
he claimed that he can lift weights, climb stairs uh, without panting, and his urinary stream's length increased considerably. A statement from such a famous man triggered a movement in organotherapy. And uh, I am quoting him verbatim here, quote, the kidneys, salivary glands, and the pancreas are not merely organs of elimination. They are like thyroid, organs giving to the blood important principles. When the pancreas has been suppressed, there is diabetes. I wonder whether people will be cured from diabetes if they get injected with pancreas extract from a healthy animal. So uh, even though his idea was right, but uh, his uh, idea of organotherapy was taken to uh, another level. So once uh, his presentation got published in the 19, uh, sorry, 1889 issue of Lancer, commercial exploitation of his idea of glandular therapy happened rampantly. It brought a lot of disrepute to him at the end of his career. This is one of the ads. This was an ad by Ferris and Co of Bristol. Uh, it claims that they, they were the sole agents of the organic fluids prepared by um, Cheeks and Remo of Paris, which is another company, according to the process of Brown Sicard. They claim that uh, the process was uh, uh, given by the Dr. Brown Sicard. So, similar lot uh, companies erupted all over Europe and US, and a lot of uh, such uh, uh, therapies were marketed to people. Most of them were injectables. And Sicard's claim was given further credence in 1891 by the success of George Murray. He successfully injected glycerin extract of sheep thyroid in a florid case of myxedema in 1891. Twice weekly injections, this lady, look at this lady, on the left you see the florid myxedema features. Uh, he gave twice weekly injections of uh, thyroid extract uh, to this 46 year old patient, which uh, vastly improved her condition. This became a solid proof for the existence of an internal secretion and its use as a treatment. Soon it was proved that even oral thyroid extract was equally effective and was switched to oral tablets. She was switched to oral tablets and she remained well until 74 years of age. Finally, she died due to heart failure. This was one of the famous patients uh, who was presented in a conference. In 1893, uh, French histologist, um, Gustave Edward Laguse opined that islets were the seat of production of internal secretion. So he was the first one to suggest that the uh, islets of Langerhans uh, must be the seat of uh, that uh, uh, internal uh, secretion in the pancreas. He was the one who named the islets as islets of Langerhans uh, in the honor of uh, uh, Langerhans. In the first decade of the 20th century, a dozen research groups were on the trail of internal secretion of pancreas. Uh, from 1889 to 1921, in those 32 years, a uh, lot of research was done. Uh, it took another 32 years for uh, uh, Banting to come and uh, get that magic portion for the patients. In 1901, Eugene O.P., a pathologist at John Hopkins University, Baltimore, established the association between diabetes and destruction of islets of Langerhans. So, so he zeroed in on the islets themselves. This was an important observation as in the absence of lesions uh, in the pancreas, many researchers continue to deny the connection of the pancreas with diabetes. Even after the Minkowski's experiment, they were in a denial mode because the, uh, the uh, examination during postmortem of the gross examination of pancreas did not reveal any lesion. So in that sense, uh, OP's contribution becomes very important because he uh, zeroed in on islets as uh, probably the seat of uh, the problem. He found hyaline changes in the islets of diabetic patients, giving evidence that these islets could be the seat of the disease. In the fifth edition of uh, uh, his medicine textbook, the famous William Osler published a chapter the pancreas in diabetes and quoted uh, uh, his John Hopkins colleague, O.P. This is Edward Schieffer. He was a professor of physiology at the University College London. After injecting suprarenal extract into a dog, he stood amazed to see the mercury mounting in the arterial manometer. 
it is said that the recording float in the manometer was lifted almost out of the manometer tube what amazed him was a tiny dose necessary to produce such a dramatic effect so he endorsed brown sicard's view that all uh, tissues and organs produced internal secretions he predicted that the vascular islet secrete insulin he was the first one probably to use the word insulin uh, which profoundly modifies the carbohydrate metabolism so uh, since he was doing experiments with the suprarenal extra, uh, extract he was sure that pancreas also must be secreting something in very very small amounts which uh, the researchers were not able to isolate then came lydia dewitt lydia dewitt uh, was a female american pathologist uh, in 1906 dewitt published a detailed study in the journal of experimental medicine dewitt made soluble extract of pancreas by successfully isolating the islets of langerhans cells after tying off the pancreatic ducts something similar to what banting did uh, to test if the extract was biologically active she added it to a preparation of muscle extract to see if it would affect the sugar sugar consumption it did because the muscle tissue in the test tube absorbed the glucose dewitt concluded that her results speak with no uncertain voice that islands manufacture a substance which favors glycolytic action of muscle ferment her experiments were done in test tubes and not in live animals or humans but dewitt then suggested a test of the extract in humans to to, to discover its effect whether it can cure uh, diabetes in humans so then we will move on to few people who uh, almost did it uh, from 1900 to 1921 uh, these are the five uh, researchers who almost uh, landed up with uh, extracting the pancreatic extract so the story of uh, eugene gley is truly remarkable at a meeting of uh, society of biology held in paris on uh, 23rd uh, december 1922 remember in uh, banting uh, uh, and the best successfully uh, uh, used their extract in leonard thompson in somewhere in january uh, february 1922 the end of this same year when insulin was discovered and used successfully in humans uh, he attended a meeting in a uh, in paris while the meeting was on he sent someone to his bank locker to get an envelope deposited way back in year 1905 he opened the envelope in front of the audience and read the contents in this he had described his successful experiments with pancreatic uh, extracts so eugene gley had in fact isolated pancreatic extract in 1904 itself but never revealed it until the discovery of insulin no one knows for sure why he did it uh why he concealed it we don't know in 1906 jog ludwig zulzer a young physician in berlin removed the whole pancreas squeezed out the juice precipitated the uh, precipitated the protein with alcohol and then prepared an alcohol free extract he called this acometa he administered this extract subcutaneously and intravenously uh into dogs and found that Uh, it can reduce the sugar over the next 3 years he treated eight patients and published a report his extract eliminated the excretion of sugar and ketone bodies without any change in the patient's diet his extract was presented as acometal and he gave it to minkowski's lab for further validation minkowski's assistant foschback tested it on a uh, few dogs i think 3 dogs and he confirmed that it suppresses glycosuria but all the dogs developed a high grade fever and minkowski concluded that it would not be uh, possible to do human experiments with this extract this decision was publicly regretted by minkowski later because he should have pursued this lead further but he failed to do so but some companies got interested which include uh, shering and roche they entered into an agreement with zulser to develop his extract unfortunately for zulser the world war 1 broke out and uh, since he was living in germany his uh, big lab was taken over by the nazis for their experiments and he was also drafted into the german army but later once the war got over uh, zulser uh, was adamant that he he can do it 
So he uh, got a patent, American patent. This was uh, uh, 1911 American patent, but he couldn't proceed further. Then came Ernest Lyman Scott. He was a PhD student in the University of Chicago. His guide was uh, the HOD of uh, physiology, Dr. Anton J. Carlson. Scott made extracts from pancreas treated with warm alcohol. His extract produced significant drop in glycosuria in three out of four drops. So he uh, was experimenting with four drops, at least in three, it produced good effect. He wrote a paper and gave it to Dr. Carlson for publication in a reputed journal. These were the conclusions uh, written by uh, Scott. Conclusion one, there is an internal secretion from the pancreas controlling the sugar metabolism. Conclusion two, by proper methods, this secretion may be extracted and uh, still retain its activity. But then, unfortunately for him, his professor rewrote the conclusion like this. It does not follow that these good effects are due to the internal secretion. The injections are usually followed by a temporary rise in temperature, and this may be the factor in the lowered sugar output. The lowering of the sugar by the extract may be due to its toxic effect rather than by a specific regulatory action of the pancreatic secretion. The, it just took the sale out of this uh, uh, paper. So, uh, Oh, sorry, but uh, Scott continued uh, his interest in the internal secretion of pancreas. He was just trying to do the experiments in a different university. Uh, so he went to Cleveland and he met even Professor MacLeod, who was a physiology HOD at the Western Reserve University around that time. Remember, Professor MacLeod was the president of American Physiology Association around that time. He was an authority. So when uh, Scott went and met like, MacLeod with his uh, uh, suggestions, MacLeod was not at all interested in this idea and just shrugged it off. Then came Israel as cleaner. Uh, he was a PhD in physiological chemistry. Uh, while he was associated with Rockefeller Institute, he produced a pancreatic extract, which really worked. He was the first uh, to document a reduction in the blood glucose as well as urine glucose. So remember all the researchers prior to him, uh, they were just checking the urine glucose. Whereas this man uh, was the first one to uh, check the blood glucose as well. Uh, this was his well acclaimed book on the right side. And this was his experiment. He was just uh, uh, injecting the pancreatic extract and compared it with the submandibular extract. So, he gave uh, one shot of pancreatic extract and another shot of submandibular extract and compared the uh, reduction in the blood glucose. You can see uh, the red uh, bars, uh, which are pancreatic extracts, reducing the blood glucose levels nicely after 95 minutes uh, after the injection. Uh, fortunately for him, he left the job and joined as a Dean of New York Medical College. So which was a promotion in fact. So. For him, there were no facilities for animal experimentation and uh, his administrative work also was huge. So he just abandoned his experiments at that point of time. Then our last uh, researcher, uh, Nicole C. Paulescu, he was a Roman physiologist. He studied medicine in Paris under Etienne Lanzerox, whom we covered, who was the first to suggest that diabetes originated in the pancreas. Lanzerox was the first to suggest that diabetes originated in the pancreas. So Paulescu studied under him. Um, after finishing his PhD, he joined the uh, University of Bucharest in Romania. Along with Lancerax, he wrote four volume treatise on medicine. Uh, his book was very famous, textbook of medicine. By 1916, he isolated an active pancreatic substance and named it pancreine. Injection of this substance into the jugular vein of the dog reduced the blood glucose level. Again, unfortunately for him, World War I abruptly uh, stopped his experiments and he was commissioned into the Romanian army. Once the war ended, he published five papers in 1921, the last of which comprehensively described his work. But this paper was published in an obscure uh, French journal in August 1921. In the same summer, Banting and Best were also successful and published their work. In January 1922, when the Canadian team were very successful with their first human experiment with Leonard Thompson, Paulescu's extract still remained very crude and unpurified. 
three months uh, later after uh, leonard thompson successful recovery on uh, 10th april 1922 paulescu obtained a romanian patent for his extract but it became redundant because of the amazing fast paced developments which happened at the university of toronto paulescu was also famous for uh, another reason uh, which is not very uh, nice Uh, Polescu founded the National Christian Union in 1922, uh, which was the forerunner to the Iron God. His anti-Semitic, he was anti-Jewish. Uh, his anti-Semitic writings encouraged the public to act violently against the Jews in Romania. Half a million Jews were killed by Iron God and uh, its supporters during uh, the World War One. Um, sorry, World War Two. In 2002. a bronze statue of uh, paulescu you can see the bronze statue here uh, was unveiled in the university of uh, bucharest uh, by the then idf president in the next year in 2003 a ceremony was organized to unveil his bust in paris idf uh, there was an uh, international diabetes federation conference going on in paris around that time in 2003 so uh, the idf president who inaugurated uh, the bronze statue the previous year at bucharest was willing to uh, unveil a bust also in uh, that idea this triggered large scale protests by jewish human rights organizations because because of his work because of his publications uh, uh, they thought uh, romanians were uh, triggered uh, against uh, the jews and lot of people got killed uh, during the world war 2 so they were against uh, this uh, uh, ceremony and that ceremony was finally cancelled i don't know whether uh, professor mohan attended this particular 2003 paris idf uh, if uh, he has attended he must be remembering this uh, between 19 um, 13 and uh, 1916 john merlin and benjamin cramer fiddled a lot with pancreatic extracts later that they turned their attention to experimenting uh, the influence of alkaline solution in human metabolism they also abandoned their experiments finally in 1912 Knowlton and Starling experimented with pancreatic extract but their interest was to understand the utilization of sugar by cardiac myocytes in diabetic dogs in their conclusion actually they wrote uh, so far as our results go they seem to indicate that the pancreas normally produces a hormone which circulates in the blood and the presence of which in order that the tissue cells may be able to assimilate and utilize the sugar in the blood So in 1913, Dr. MacLeod published a book on diabetes, which summarized all the research that was done until that time. He was the president of the American Physiological Society and was an international authority when this book got published. These were his conclusions: there seems to be an internal secretion of pancreas, and he suggested in his book several reasons why it might never be captured in the pancreatic extract. in the same year the topmost uh, diabetic physician of uh, uh, us dr allen frederick allen also wrote negatively about one generation's attempt to treat diabetes with pancreatic extracts this was akin to an obituary or an epitaph for the pancreatic research he wrote all authorities are agreed upon the failure of pancreatic or organotherapy in diabetes injections of pancreatic preparations have proved both useless and harmful the failure began with minkowski and has continued to the present without an interruption the negative reports have been numerous and trustworthy so all these dedicated people came so near to discovering insulin but they missed out miserably between 1890 to 1990 three decades of research on pancreas uh, was performed uh, Uh, a lot of people try to uh, get that extract and treat uh, diabetes with it uh, lydia devit uh, mentioned that more thought and investigation was going into the islets than any other organ or tissue of the body around that time and in 1910 op mentioned the literature on diabetes was voluminous but then it required a young orthopedic surgeon with no experience in physiological research with uh, very sparse knowledge from one article to bring cheers to the lives of uh, millions before uh, banting uh, 
um, if someone gets type 1 diabetes, it was a death sentence. You can see a small child getting wheeled into the mortuary room uh, after a, a death due to diabetic coma. So it was in 1920, Banting knocked the doors of MacLeod. He had a dream uh, which uh, none of the learned professors of physiology and medicine could achieve for more than 250 years. His knowledge was limited to one pathology case study written by Moses Barron. He was not aware of any work done on the pancreas by the pioneers or his contemporaries. He had no experience in doing animal experiments or, um, or blood and sugar, urine sugar measurement. But his knock on MacLeod's door proved to be a fortunate collision of opportunity, ability, experience, and drive. So University of Toronto provided the final four pieces in less than a year to solve this problem of the millennium. In the next presentation, we shall see how 